it is another extremely hot day. Which is good, except unfortunately I'm stuck in the house because I'm waiting for a delivery that I actually missed. Also, I have discovered that I actually don't own any shorts that aren't running shorts. This is the nearest I've got to shorts. That's something I'm definitely gonna have to think about buying now that, you know, we live in the tropics. So it's right, I do sound like a proper Englishman right now. It's cold, it's not cold, it's very, very hot. I just want this delivery I'm waiting for to turn up and then we can go out. The problem is I missed it once already. Oh, wow, it's a hot board. Deliveries are a nightmare. Why don't you bring the penny board out here, the outside one? There are a couple of things I wanted to talk about today, but first I need sunglasses. There you go, better. Um, much better. So, supercharger network. Apparently by the end of the year, they're going to have completed a cross Canada supercharger route. And I think this is one of the main things that other EV manufacturers don't seem to fully grasp yet. If people are gonna buy a longer range EV, then they need to know that they can drive it over a long distance. And in order to do that, you need to put quick charges and you have to put quick charges where people are going to be passing through not necessarily where people are going to arrive or where they're going to start you see most quick chargers seem to wind up in population centers that's fine if you can get there with the range but if there's big towns or cities are separated by say 300 miles well you need some kind of quick charger right in the middle even if the middle happens to be between two mountains with not a soul in sight. And Tesla seems to be the only people that really get that. I think it's a massive limit on what other EV manufacturers can achieve. I mean, take for example in Europe, you've got Audi coming out with the uh, e-tron, you've got the iPACE from Jaguar. These sound like really great cars and they will work very well for getting around the UK because we have a very good non-Tesla quick charger network. Which is distributed along all the major trunk roads, motorways, the vast majority of the A roads, the sort of which are the big non-motorway roads. So from a UK point of view, those vehicles are gonna work great but you go over to the continent and it gets a bit more patchy. It gets more patchy because of charging networks and the fact that some of them you can't even sign up to unless you are a resident in that country, which is crazy. But even if you could sign up to them, right? Let's say you wanna take a road trip to Italy. You're planning on driving through France, Germany, Switzerland, and then into Italy. So you have to contact four different charging networks for each of those countries so that you can charge up on route. And that's assuming that you only need one charging network for each of those countries. If you needed two, that would be eight. So you'd basically have to block out a couple of days to ring people, to try and talk to them in languages that you may not speak particularly well and they may not speak English particularly well. And you've got to try and convince them to send you a network card for their network, even though you don't have an address in their country. And you're only gonna use it, I don't know, two or three times maybe. So there's no financial incentive to them. There's an awful lot of hassle for you. And if you don't get it, you can't take your iPACE to Italy on holiday. That is a massive problem. Contrast that with Tesla. If I wanna to drive to Italy in my Tesla, I get in the car, I drive. I stop at superchargers, whether they're in the UK, France, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, wherever they happen to be, I just stop, plug in, no cards, no charge either for me, no cost. But even if there was a cost, it would just be billed automatically. It's just, it's a totally different world that nobody else seems to have put any effort into getting their head round. Now, I think these are things that are gonna change, but they're not gonna change until EVs become really, really popular. EVs are gonna take a lot longer to become really, really popular if the capable EVs that are produced are not actually supported by infrastructure. 
So that's my rant on that done. Hope I've not missed that delivery. Oh, Jasper is around, so uh, I think he'd tell me if somebody came to the door. Jazzy? I'm sort of beginning to think it really wouldn't be worth it because it would never pay for itself in a month of Sundays, really. I think the ba basic unit is about, um, you know, five to six thousand pounds. So, I, I mean, the, the, the basic problem with it is that in the winter it would virtually do nothing because I virtually use all the power it produces in the winter. Yeah. Just occasionally when there's been more sunshine, would you perhaps store a couple of kilowatt hours in it? Most of our electricity, well, we use it in the greatest wattage, so to speak, in the evening when we're cooking, when Anna gets back and cooks the evening meal, which of course is when the sun's just going down, so actually the roof's producing very little energy then. But even in the middle of summer, it would store actually more electricity than you could possibly use, that's the trouble. It stores 15 kilowatt hours, and you could easily save that much on a good day, on a good day like today, unless I get an electric vehicle or something like that. But even if you use all the electricity that you could possibly hope to store, you would still probably be looking at um, hundreds of years <laughs> to get a payback on it. There's no way it really makes any financial sense, but nevertheless, if you've got a bit of money to throw around and you're a bit of a tech geek, it would be interesting. It's a good idea, something like yeah. power walls, you know, but yeah. if lots of houses had them, it would start to add up to a sort of proper grid scale storage, just the same way that yes. solar panels on people's yeah. roofs add up to grid scale energy production. Well, it's, it's one of those things that I think ultimately is not a bit like with solar panels, you know, a while ago, it's never gonna take off until the government actually sees that it's worth making it take off and therefore incentivizing it and also you would you know it'd be quite nice to have a a smart grid installed as well like a properly smart grid so that if yeah. there was a power cut outside the village but enough of the houses in the village had power storage power walls, yeah, exactly keep the, village going. the irony of these things is that as soon as you do get a power cut absolutely everything stops because because it doesn't have a a grid to actually synchronize itself to all the all your solar panels shut down then. it says that the round trip efficiency is only about 94 percent i think or no even less than that i think it was 86 percent which means that 14 percent of the power is lost in the conversion from dc to ac and then from AC back to DC, and then from DC back to AC, which is what happens when you store it. Right, why doesn't it just take the DC from the solar panels and put well, that through a DC to DC not. converter into the battery? It would make sense if it did, wouldn't it? I suppose the other thing that they need to work on with this, a good selling point, is if it provides backup power should the grid go down. But the yeah, way these exactly. grid-type inverters work at the moment, you just don't yeah. get that at all. But I would like to continue this another time. Cheers. Take, Take care, Crofton. Time. Cheers. Bye. Interesting and unexpected. Now, he's actually a father of a good friend of mine. Sounds like Tesla power wall's not going to be a goer for him. I think, ultimately, it does need to make financial sense. And if that means the government needs to incentivize it to get things going, then I think that's what they should do and they definitely need to invest in a proper smart grid because that is another part of the puzzle. The latest skate park trip ever. But at least we're going. It's that phrase, better late than never. It's a good trick you got there, Jasper. I like it. Ah! 
Hello. We're heading home now. Jasper's knackered. I got told off for letting him out so late. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to like it, share it, and subscribe if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram if you don't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. I think the cookies are finished. <laughs> uh, that's mummy's top. She's not going to appreciate that, Jasper. Oh dear. You're going to be one of those outtake moments. The cookies are not finished. Ah. Yes, the cookies are finished. The cookies are finished.